Yo, what's up guys? We're gonna watch how I was able to make my t-shirt business successful. You know, how I was able to make my t-shirt business into my full-time income. Let me show you how I started my t-shirt business. Let me tell you some behind the scenes of what happened that I wasn't able to record. And hopefully you enjoy the journey. That's right, nobody ever became successful by playing it safe. You have to take risks. You know what they say, you gotta risk it for the biscuit. So let's go. First of all, I wanna start by saying I had to shave because of work. Yeah, I know I look like a fat, fat baby. It's all right, go ahead, laugh, laugh. Get it out of your system. I guess who's making details again. So that's right, I bought my vinyl cutter from Amazon. This is about the second vinyl cutter I got. So I already know how to work it. And I started my t-shirt business with decals. If you know what decal is, pretty much a sticker you put on the car like this, pow, like that. Like I mean installing it. Decals, high profit margin. To make money, you need to invest money. I invested about $300 on this decal machine and I got it from Amazon. And just letting you know, the price went up, but of course I have more affordable Cutters like the Cameo 4, Vinyl Specialist from a company called Heat Press Nation. They've been my affiliate for three years. Great customer service, great products. I stand behind them, but hey, the Amazon link to this cutter is also in the description below, all right? Go check it out. And just letting you know, I did all of this from one bedroom. That was my bedroom right there. I didn't have anywhere to sleep. I slept on the couch. That's how I started my decal business. So what did I do to get business? Social media. I posted that I was back in business on my Facebook and Instagram page. And I got my first order from a homie of mine. That should always be your first customers. Not only are they gonna support you, if you mess up, <laughs> they're gonna understand. Best since day one. That was a homie right there. Hey, let me know. Do I look better with the beer or without the beer? But anyways, that's my goal right there. I want to make a thousand dollars in sales. And of course, 100, 250, 500, and then a thousand. Did I achieve that goal? You're about to find out. I did a few Facebook posts and I did get some orders. So there you go, I start making money. Material cost only 50 cents. I was charging $10 a decal for those decals right there. Made a $9.50 profit. Of course, not including time, not including uh, the calories I burn, not including the taxes, but hey, you know? Here's another one. This customer just wanted that number and letters. I think it was for a boat or something. Psh, super easy, 25 cents, charge $10. Look at that profit, man. You know, and then I just took any order I felt like I could do, like these. It was for a coach. He wanted to put those that letter on helmets. Gave him a great price, and actually, they became regular customers. So, because of all those small orders, I was able to crush the $100 uh, challenge, and now onto 250. Right here, I made a website. And let me tell you something, when you're small, don't worry about a website, mainly focus on Facebook and your community. So pretty much how I was getting orders, constantly posting on Facebook and to my friends about two or three times a week on showing different pictures. And not trying to sound spammy, like, hey, custom decals, hit me up. More like, hey, check out the work I've done and of course, show a lot of good pictures. Direct, instead of trying to go for the sale, direct them to your business Facebook page. That way, you start building your customer base. Hope that made sense. And there I go, making more decals. Boom. 20 bone skis right there. That's right, that's right. You always have to figure out how to make more money with the things you already have. Could you provide maybe a little better service? Could you provide another product, and what I upsold was installation. A lot of people don't know how to install decals. And it takes some trial and error. 
So I offer installation for another ten dollars. It worked. It worked. People were willing to pay because they knew. Here's the thing: decals. They last years if you use great material. I use Oracle Set 51 in the description below. You know, and here's another thing: people who want a decal on their car, they want it done right. So they're gonna hire and pay somebody to do it for them if they can. So instead of making $20 for just a decal, I was making $30 because I upsold installation. And to be honest, I would have done it for free. I hit the $500 sale challenge. But of course, here's the thing about decals. There's only so many cars you could do. And not everybody wants a decal on their car. So even though I was getting some orders, I needed to do something that was going to bring in more orders. Something that people, more people want. And you know what that was? I don't know if you could see that heat press back there, but it was a shirt. I already had the vinyl cutter. With a heat press, I could start making shirts. So, the effort's coming in nice. And believe it or not, while I'm growing my decal business, I still have my day job. I was working in the fields. And I was selling snacks, chocolates, drinks, just to make some extra money, man. Me, I'm always looking for ways of making extra money. All right, so here we go. Custom t-shirts. Got the heat press from Amazon, which are very cheaply made. They only last on average about six months. Of course, you want a better heat press that's gonna last you longer. Everything in the description below. But look, the shirt cost me $540. So it was honestly costing me a lot to produce a shirt. The shirt cost me a $540 because I was only getting shirts from my local uh, t-shirt shop. Of course, they raised the prices. But since I was testing it out, I didn't care about that. I just care about getting experience on how to make shirts. The vinyl cost me about $3, so $8.40 to make a custom shirt. I started charging about $17, and actually that shirt, I was a coach for a soccer team. And I just made that shirt to see if any of the parents wanted some. So I tried so many different things to see what my customers liked. Custom mugs with decal, I even did custom frames, that's for my little girl. They brought me the glass, I just installed the decal. Flags, polyester flags, magnets. I even did car magnets right there. And just letting you know, in business, you have to focus on what's bringing in the cheddar, the gravy, the money, and uh, shirts and decals were my top sellers, so I focus on that. Of course, if someone wanted mugs, someone wanted a flag, great. But I knew my customers mainly wanted to see t-shirts and decals. So that's what I focused on. So I started getting orders for t-shirts, for decals. So that was my soccer team. And sure enough, all of them ordered custom t-shirts. So it worked out. And I did hit $1,000. My next goal was to hit $2,000. But there's a problem. I was limited with vinyls and decals because I was getting hit up for bigger orders. And when I would put them for a big order, I was charging for vinyl, I was charging for shirts, and I was charging for my time. Well, I knew I couldn't compete with screen printers because I, after doing my research, I knew that screen printing it's cheap, it's the way to go. So what did I do? I invested on a cheap screen printing press. That's how I used to drop my shirts. I didn't have a conveyor belt or, any, or a flash dryer. I had a heat gun and it took so much time. But hey, that was the grind. Oh man, I remember screen printing. When you first screen print, be ready to go through the headaches, through the stress, you're gonna get upset. It took me a while to figure, look, everything from home. I used to have two chairs, put the broom on top so I could hang my light, so I could burn my screen. Just like, I used to use canned food so it could be elevated a little bit. You know, I used to clean my screens outside with a hose. I didn't have enough money at that moment 
to get a power washer, to get a light box to burn my screen. I had to make stuff work with what I had. But eventually, I got it down. Hey, just letting you know, the more money I made, the bummier I looked. Just cause, you know, I didn't care to impress people. Let you know, even my girlfriend was like, hey, you gotta shave. You're looking like a bum. Right now, at this time, I was still working in the fields, and they don't care if you shave or not. But my business was growing, and I knew it was just a matter of time before I was able to quit the fields and do this full time. I just had to believe in myself and grind. So here's one thing I see a lot of people do incorrectly, which is they're trying a whole bunch of different ways to grow in the business, but instead of focusing on what's working, they wanna keep finding new ways and invest a lot of money on new ways. No. So pretty much if you try 10 things and you notice two things are really taking off, put more money into those two things. Of course, try different things, but as cheaply as possible. And the two things that worked for me was advertising on Facebook groups and having my own business Facebook page, mainly Facebook to be honest, because I was focusing on my community. If you want to make money with custom shirts, focus on your community. And the second thing, word of mouth. I gave everybody great customer service, a smile, a great product, and of course, they spread the word for me. This is actually a clinic that, you know, found out about me and they ordered 27 shirts. I made $190 profit. My biggest order to date, they loved it. And this got me a lot of business. Look, this is a soccer team. One of the people who worked for that clinic, they were part of a soccer team. They put my name out there and boom, got those orders. That's it. You know, it's a slow grind. I'm, what I've been showing you so far, it's been months in the making. I wanna say about three months. This is where I'm at. And it's still not my full-time income, but I'm grinding, man, I'm making it happen. Look, family reunion shirts. Growing a business is not hard. It's just a grind, it's consistency, and it's always trying to improve yourself. And guess what? My town, I was making so many shirts for my town, the school even hit me up. And that was just a sample. I noticed big organizations, clubs, teams, even the school, they're gonna test you out with a small order just to see how you could handle it and if you could give them a great price. So if you could give them a great price and a great product, pretty sure you're gonna get the business. But there's a reason why I didn't wanna focus on schools. And I'll tell you about it when we get there. So this is my, I changed my name again, custom royalty, but this is where I'm sharing the pictures. Look, and I'm always showing love to my customers. That's another thing. Show love to your customers. Thank you for hitting me up for your business. Your shirts will be ready this week. Here's another thing, always be on time. There was a lot of times when I, uh, I busted all nighters. I started making shirts from eight in the morning and I didn't go to sleep till like five or six in the morning the next day just to make sure I would deliver. And here's the thing, all my customers knew, you order from me, you're gonna get your shirt on time no matter what. And of course, part of business, you gotta try new things. Right here, I'm trying grow shirts and glitter. Did it work? You're about to find out. In my last video, you saw me make $2,800 in sales, $1,700 profit. My next goal, $3,000 in profit in one month. Can I do it? Ooh, man, I don't know. So just letting you know, the more money I made, the more bummier I look. You don't even want to see the next clip. I'm all, I'm 90% hair. One thing I'm starting to know, see, I'm still trying to figure out my niche. Who do I want to do business with? And glitter, gross shirts, huge profit. Not big orders, but for some reason, females, they're willing to spend money for something pretty. 
And look, I'm always trying new things. Rhinestones, nah. It, it wasn't working for me, but the glitter did. A college for child development center, pretty much a daycare, hit me up. They wanted custom shirts. So pretty much my whole town, they know about me. They know I deliver. They know I do great products. I, I give a great service and I just kept getting business. And this month, because of all the business I was getting, I think it was $3,500 in sales this month. Look at that. Here, a school hit me up, another school. The class of 2021 hit me up. They want a custom shirt. I think they ordered about 150 shirts. I remember this, this was such a huge headache because it was two colors in the front, two colors in the back, and I'm used to doing just a one color design. It was a challenge, but I got it done. But here's the thing, I didn't want to do school orders after that because that order, I went to somebody who works for the school, not the school directly. So the school, they love the shirts and they hit me up directly. But here's something I noticed about schools. They want the cheapest price and not even want to compete with the cheapest price because that order that I did for them took me forever, huge headache and not as much profit as I wanted. So I told him, no, that's it. I didn't want to compete on price. I knew my value and I wanted to get paid what I felt I was worth. And another thing about schools, they're demanding. They want things ASAP. They want things their way 100% of the time. I don't like working with people like that. So this right now is about six months in the future. I took a break from making YouTube content so I could focus on growing my t-shirt business. And just letting you know that was a huge mistake. I should have kept making content because when you stop producing content for so long, when you come back, it's like starting over. But look at my hair, look at my hair, look at my beautiful hair. Man, I miss my hair. So one thing a lot of people wanted was pictures on shirts. And I had to figure out how to do that as cheaply as possible. So I got a cheap Epson inkjet printer. I had to cut it manually. But here's the thing, customers, they just want the picture. They don't really care how it feels. They don't really care, you know, if it's the best quality. Because a lot of these type of shirts, one time use. This is one of those all nighters. They wanted pictures on all the shirts. They order about like 50 to 60 shirts front and back. Luckily it was one color, but that took me all night. I didn't stop making shirts till three in the morning. Cause here's the thing, when someone, you know, passes away, you only have a couple days before the funeral, but I made it happen. And then I realized using my hose doesn't really get all the emotion out of the screens. So I went to a car wash. You're not supposed to do that. I had to do what I had to do. Look at that. Mm, almost like new, quicker, more efficient. So I just started going to the car wash at night when that guy wasn't there because I didn't want him telling me anything. And then I just put him back in the trunk of my car went back, let them dry, new designs. So here's the last episode that I uploaded and I never got to finish the series because I jumped back into YouTube and I wanted to do YouTube. I messed up because during those six months I was focusing on my t-shirt business, I didn't record anything. I should've and I learned my lesson. And right here, I've made $4,000 in sales so far. So for those six months that I was focusing on my t-shirt business, I was able to make it into my full-time income. So it did work. One of my followers asked me, Race, how much should I charge for a shirt? Well, that's kind of hard to answer because we all have different prices. But as I'm getting better, I'm raising my prices. And I was thinking to myself, if I raise my prices to $17, will I still get business? Well, there's only one way to find out. So I raised my prices to $17. And that's pretty much it. I just kept raising my prices as I got better. And 
And at the end, I didn't record this, but I was charging $25 for one custom shirt. And yes, I didn't get as many customers, but the customers I did get were my loyal customer base. They knew my work, they knew my reputation, so they were willing to pay my prices. That was the last day of uh, soccer, and it was fun, man. I was spitting that free 99 knowledge to every kid. I was like, follow your dreams, all right? Don't listen to your parents. And another thing that helped me out was getting honest reviews. You can say anything you want about your business, but when customers are saying the same thing, that's how you're gonna get new customers. Look, great servers and quick delivery, even though I live in Indiana. Thank you so much, Reyes, for the shirts. Short notice. And then when you're trying to grow a business, you need to figure out how are you gonna make yourself different than your competition? My, me, how I made myself different, I made sure to always get you your shirt. You hit me up and you're like, Reyes, I need my shirt tomorrow. If I could do it, I'll do it. And I'll make sure I do it. If I can't, I can't, I'm sorry. But that's showing the customer. If I could make your shirt, I guarantee it's gonna be done at this day, no matter what. If I can't, hey, hit me up next time. Because a lot of competition, they say a one week, a two week turnaround time, they charge for designs. That's another thing I did. I didn't charge to do your design. And yes, I know I maybe left a lot of money on the table, but hey, to make my customers experience easier and better, that's what I felt I had to do and it worked because I didn't record this. And the reason I didn't record it was because I was just done with shirts and I was focusing on YouTube and I wanted to try new types of videos. But like I said, I've been recording my journey on everything ever since. I learned my lesson, you know? And then I was trying new things, tumblers, they didn't go so well. I actually had my shirts at a gas station. So let me tell you what happened next. What happened next was I hit $5,000 in sales, but I was overworking myself. That's why I didn't have a lot of time to record. I was busting 12 to 14 hour days, six days a week. When am I gonna find time to record and edit videos? So I just focused on my t-shirt business mainly, but then I realized I'm overworking myself, I'm not enjoying it, and I feel like I could make more money doing something else and that was YouTube. So that's when I started focusing more on YouTube. And then I pretty much just sold my equipment so I could be laser focused on growing YouTube. And of course YouTube had its ups and downs, but I'm grateful to say I've never made this much money in my life. I have a lot of free time to spend with my family, do whatever I want, and I'm helping hopefully change lives, inspire people to follow their dreams. So that's how I made my t-shirt business a success in my own community, making decent money. Of course, putting in those hours, but that's how you do it. That's how you grow every business. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something. And if you did, press the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.